So the old Plymouth has been sitting here dead for about three or four months now, maybe a little bit longer. And as I mentioned earlier, Phil ran over something, got into the radiator, there's Phil there. And uh, so we had to take this radiator out and have it repaired. I told you about that. So uh, he says it's flooding, it won't stay running. So I already built this carburetor about three or four years ago. I don't remember anything unusual about it so it was a good carburetor I don't know why it would have suddenly flaked out unless it got garbage up in it but we're gonna take that off and Phil's gonna get started on the I guess Phil's gonna get started on the wheel bearings or the um, the brake which side which side blew out Phil driver's side okay yeah that precipitated the, the crash into the bushes up there I guess so anyway, he's going to work on that. I'm going to work on the carburetor, and hopefully at the end of the day we'll get this thing going again. Phil's uh, trying to resuscitate his floor jack. Well, this carburetor looks like it has been on here for 20 years. But I assure you that it was fully rebuilt about three years ago. So it is sure seeped and wheat and all that, looks like. Well, somebody's been banging on it. I wonder who that was. Trying to get it to not. Yeah. A mechanic, he ain't. Well, I got this carburetor broken down mostly, and uh, he said it kept flooding real bad, and I couldn't find anything, um, a smoking gun, so to speak, except that it looked like this uh, inlet needle and seat assembly had maybe come apart because it's supposed to go together that's your seat assembly and then you got the needle and goes in there and then this part's supposed to the plastic part supposed to be over it and it looks like it might have swelled or something and just dropped off because I think the new one doesn't come off but it did so that might have been what was hanging it up but the other thing or two that I found was that this thing, I don't know if you can see or not, but it looks like it has metal slivers in the bowl. And for the life of me, I can't understand why that would be happening, except that the fuel pump's coming apart maybe, but that's weird. And then you see right there that little piece of blue material, that's part of the accelerator pump. <laughs> which is now missing from there. It's down in there, so anyway, we'll clean it up. I got a new float for it, so we'll put that in too. So, I don't know, I hope it works. Well, the mystery of the metal shavings is solved. You see, this is the end of the plunger for the accelerator pump, and it fits, it resides, whoops, down in that little bore right, right there goes down in there and it was sticking and there's a real shiny spot on that so something's up with that relationship between this plastic and there we go there it is and that thing so I don't know if this plastic is just kind of swell up over the years but I have to work on that and get that working right that's what it was uh, what's that bud the white wire that's coming up well I think it's white I oh. don't one wire that's on this side yeah. uh, kills everything. Oh, right. It shuts it right off. I mean, okay. it kills. No lights, no nothing. Yeah, well, guys, we we uh, we got the carburetor done. We're fixing to try it and see if it's going to run okay. But we we bit off a little bit more than we could chew with the wheel cylinder because these are the ones that you have to take the whole backing plate and everything off, and they are on there tough. So we're going to come back for another date on this I think and we'll tackle that so we gotta have an impact to get all the rest of that off and put new wheel seal in it and everything so we're gonna we're gonna come back to it so but for now I think we're gonna see if this thing will hopefully that thing is just a little loose by the way okay in we'll fact be. it may be too loose to nah it's, it's okay temporarily it'll be alright for now I think so we're gonna key this thing over and like I said if you start spouting gas just holler at me. I will.
Oh, Pets! Hold on to it. All right, we don't have a radiator in this thing yet, so. Yeah, it does. Is there any water in it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you put water in it. You yeah. put any antifreeze in it? Yeah. You put antifreeze in it? Yeah. You promise? Yeah. If I look in there, there's going to be green stuff in it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, guys, good. Uncle Phil's. Uncle Phil's not an antifreeze guy normally. But. All right, well, it's below empty, but we'll start it up in a little bit more. Hey. Car still running? I got to put a fuel pump on it. Oh, yeah. Other than that, she's still running good. That's good. Boy, I run the wheels off that thing. <laughs> Okay, different day. Like a month later, and Uncle Phil's up here working on wheel bearings. Different day, different day. Yeah, what's up, Pooch? And I've got to do some wiring work. I see already something wrong over here. Somebody's unplugged this. Somebody's what's tell us what's going on with this, Phil? Because we got a we got a plug that is supposed to be plugged in here to run yeah. things. It's not plugged in. And yeah, there's a, I, I yeah. took it off so I could see. There's a wire stuck in here with an end and it's not there. Right well, here. we added on. Oh, it's added on. Yeah, okay. it's added on to make it longer. Oh, was it the one before wasn't long enough or what? Yeah. Well, really? the it was all. The wire was all like greenish. Yeah. And so we cut it back to where I that's could. That's right. That's where what it was. That's what we ran into before. So Phil says there's some wires here that you got to wiggle one of them to keep the car running. Is that right? Oh, he's left on us there. He's gone. Anyway, so now what does it feel if you say you know if the if the turn signals work? Then something else works, or what's the deal here with the wiring? There's just a wire there that cuts. It, it's, nothing happens. Nothing works. Nothing's on. It's a, like a power wire. Oh. Nothing comes on. Okay. No lights. What's this wire that you? What's this wire that you? Shut up. What's this wire that you uh, unhooked and had stuck in this terminal? What's that to? That's just one that, that came out. Came fell out, rusted, and came out of it. What it goes to, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So we'll try, to, we'll try to fix this. Oh, God almighty. This is your fusible link right here. And it comes down to right there. And that's for sure where the problem probably is, right in there. The rest of them are all corroded, too. So it's just hacked it together. This is, this is a repair that I made. Here. Yeah, it fell out. Yeah. There's more than one. Look at that one over there. 
out there too. Bear, bear. Jesus. Look at there's a ah oh, shut up with the dog, will you? See here's a wire taped in here that he's added back to this one. See see what he's done? I think. Little bear. They can't be satisfied with one dog, they gotta have another one. Alright, I'll bring you back when I can make sense of this. Are we gonna be able to work today or, yeah. or are we gonna do this? I just have to put them in the house. Well, they're they're good in there. Let's leave them in there, would we? I'll have to bleed. Okay, Phil. Tell them what's up. I got a wheel smash wheel cylinder that's busted. Tell the background on this. You, did, you, didn't, you didn't tell me that part when I talked to you on the phone. So, we got this thing all together and we're bleeding the brakes and it's leaking out of the driver's side wheel cylinder, as you can see right there. We've taken it that Look, it's not because the bleeder's out. The bleeder's out. It's right here because it was leaking. Okay, don't grab it. Tell them something, please. All right, well, when I got looking at this bleeder, I noticed that it has JB weld on it because I thought it was sealer, which shouldn't even be on there for any reason. It's not sealer, it's JB weld. So I said, Phil, why has this got stuff on it? He says, I don't know. So I went up here and looked, and the whole thing up here, you can see that it's been slathered with JB weld. So I asked Phil, I says, Phil, why has it got JB weld on it? So, so Phil, tell him why it had JB weld on it. Oh, well, I put JB weld on that piece. On a wheel cylinder. On a wheel cylinder. He put it on a wheel cylinder. I put it on a wheel cylinder. Now, how many years did you spend as a mechanic? A long time. All right, so anyway, that'll never work. So it's leaking, it's busted. So in my hand, I have the new wheel cylinder, which I ordered Phil about two months ago. Alright, so it's not on the car because if it was on the car, I don't know if it was, he may have tried it, but I did try it. He did try it, okay. But he says the line up there, this thing has got you peek your head in there, there's a there's a piece of curved brake line, which I don't know how many thousands of miles of that brake line exists in the country now, but it's just a curved S curved piece of brake line that fits in there. And Phil says that he can't use this wheel center because that piece of line that they replaced last summer, whoever they were, won't fit in this one. It won't go all the way down because the, I guess you call it the fair rule or whatever. It's supposed to, it won't, it doesn't straight in far enough. It's not deep enough. It's not going make. far enough to stop it. You can still That's right. The line. So we discussed this on the phone, guys. Me and Phil discussed this for a long time. Phil says, well, I've went everywhere. I can't find a line. Nobody has one. I said, I tried to explain nicely to Phil. I said, they ain't gonna have one. You have to have it made. You know, one of these places that makes brake lines and makes hydraulic lines, I said, they'll make it for you. You take the one up there and take this wheel center. So I spent about 15 or 20 minutes trying to explain that to Phil. Phil said, okay, I'll go right up there next week and, and to the auto parts place in Boaz that you told me about. So I just asked him if he went. He said, no. I said, why didn't you go? He said, well, I went, I couldn't find them. I said, why didn't you call me and tell me you couldn't find it? I explained where it was. What'd you say, bud? You just didn't call me. Nope, I didn't. So, 160 mile trip again for this to happen. So, bud, I can't help you. I can't, I can't help you. I can't keep making trips up here. It's on my dime and I'm glad to help you. I love to help you. But I can't operate with the lack of information and things that may or may not be what's actually going on anymore. You know, I ordered you the wheel cylinders, and I'm just telling you, if, I, if this car was at the house, it'd take me about two days to get this line made and all back together and done, and this thing has been sitting here for five months. It's not rocket science. That Kia, if it ever goes down, it gets fixed immediately. So the agreement was, when I gave Phil this car, that it was supposed to be kept running. So I paid to fix his radiator. So I don't know if you guys and Phil thinks I'm on a rant. I am because I'm a little upset. 
I've tried to I've fixed the wires, you know. These things are simple to fix. There's nothing on these cars hard to fix. So if it sits here, I can't help it. I can't help it and I just I don't want anybody complaining, anybody giving me excuses, anybody saying nothing about it. Because all I can do is all I can do. And I told Phil, and I know Phil's thinking I'm bashing on him and I am a little bit, but I told Phil this car's went downhill since it's been up here. So, you know. I know the oil's not been changed since I changed it, and that was 6,000 miles ago. According. Well, how to get miles put on it then? Huh? If I wrote on that sticker there 57,000 miles when it's supposed to be changed, and it's got 60,400 on it now, 61, oh. how's it been driven? It's been driven, then. It's been driven. And so it's it's probably double off its oil change. He doesn't change the oil because it uses so much. That's why. So... Anyway, guys, that's the update. Bad or good, I guess. Yeah, it's bad. So. That's all I do with that stuff. No, it's not all you do, but you don't tell me all the information that we need to know. You know, you leave out that part like you JB welded something. Well, I just did that one part, but I didn't know I got any other. But bud, do you not, does it not occur, you just don't get that you can't JB weld a brake slide? It's like that muffler in there you tried to JB weld. Do you not get I that? Didn't do that? Well, whoever did it, but do you not know you can't do that? If you did that and that thing broke and this car lost its brakes and you plowed into somebody or ran somebody down on the side of the road, you, you'd be locked up in prison the rest of your life. They would say, they would say, well, what was the cause of this accident? Well, they'd say, well, Mr. Mr. Uncle Phil's brake line was JB welded. Whatever. I'm put, I'm sign off now, guys. Guess I'll go back to Tennessee. You ever wonder what might happen to your truck keys if you ran over them with the lawnmower? That. <laughs>